guys, how's it going? Today we are gonna be doing a plant unboxing. Little Prince sent us out a box of plants. I have no idea what's in this box. They did contact us, so I did know plants were coming. They asked if it was okay to send a box. Of course it's okay to send a box of plants anytime. Uh, so anyway, I knew they were coming, but I have no idea what to expect inside this box. And it's been so long since we've done a plant unboxing, I thought you guys might enjoy seeing some fresh things. So we are just gonna get into this box and see what we've got going. And I'm so glad that we recently organized here in the studio because I don't know if these are gonna be plants that need to stay in here, in which case I've got grow lights ready to turn on, fill up and turn on. Okay, so first off, oh, we've got a list here. I'm not gonna look at the list. I wanna be surprised as I see the plants. Okay, you ready for this? Uh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, I see some blooms, I see some interesting leaves. I'm going to put the box on the side here and we'll take them out one at a time. First plant. I really like how they pack their plants. They're easy to get out. They're not all wrapped in plastic, which can be a little bit hard. Oh, look at this beautiful thing. So this is an Atena fern. How interesting is that? Okay, so it looks like, yeah, each one of the plants has a, a little barrier of this. <laughs> Is this, what is this called? It's not sisal, right? Anyway, it's got this wrapped around the edge with a rubber band, which kind of, I think, keeps all the soil inside the container. But look at how beautiful these fern leaves are. They're really short and wide at the base, so, so they have a very different look. And honestly, when I first looked down from top down on this one, I thought that maybe a leaf from another plant had gotten trapped inside this container, but it didn't. This is like part of the same plant. So this one has a very different leaf structure to what you're seeing down below. So a tenifern is a Doryopteris cordata. It's a zone 10 through 11, so an indoor plant, house plant for me, for sure. It grows three inches tall, six inches wide. A tropical evergreen fern displaying lobed leathery green foliage forms a low ground hugging mound except for fertile, fertile fronds that will stand above the foliage. Okay. First one, I love it. So these plants come out of, I believe they're based in Aurora, Oregon. Um, so they're not too awful far away from us, but we're all pretty cold here in the state right now. Um, they did overnight ship it, and then it sat on our front porch for about three hours while we were at a party last night, and it was pretty chilly out. Um, but I mean, the way they're packed, there's a whole bunch of paper around them. I don't know if there are any heat things in here, but we'll see as we unpack here. Just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what the shipping was like on it. Plant number two. Oh my goodness. This is an elephant ear of some kind. Dwarf elephant ear, Alocasia dwarf amazonica, Beau Chateau. I think that's the, is that the uh, series? Beau Chateau sophisticated houseplants must be like a line, I'm guessing. Look at the leaves on this. Oh, they're really, really neat looking. So zone 10 through 11 grows 16 inches tall, 12 inches wide. Dwarf elephant ear, tropical displays, dark green shield leaves, clump habit. Oh, that's really beautiful. Now these, typically like when I see plants like this, I have to keep a really sharp eye out for spider mites whenever they're in my care. <laughs> Spider might seem to like these plants for me. So I'm going to keep an eye on. I'm not had this variety though, so this will be interesting. But it arrived to me clean as a whistle. So that's good, good start. Oh, you guys are gonna love this one. There we go. I'm looking on the tags on each one of these because I don't wanna get it wrong. This is a Swiss cheese plant, just in case there's some kind of variety that I don't quite know. So zone 10 through 11, three feet tall by three feet wide. Dang. Easily grown tropical vine has larger leaves if, provide, if provided with a climbing surface. That's interesting. Oh, this is fun because these all look to be like fairly unusual plants to find. Oh, 
That's called an eyelash fern. So it's an actinid, <laughs> actinopterus australis, australis, a zone 10 through 11, six inches tall, eight inches wide. Remains compact, needs warm temperatures and high humidity. It'll actually, I think, do really well in this room right now because I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's that I've got some seed starting going on or just all the plants, but it's the humidity in here is quite high. We really should get a gauge in here so we can know exactly. That is a beautiful, that looks like palm tree almost. Oh, this is a Birkin philodendron. I have one of these, but mine doesn't look as good because I accidentally left mine out in the cold sun porch. So this is excellent timing to get a fresh one. I love the variegation on this philodendron so much. Uh, this one grows two feet by two feet. And I just love the deep green glossy leaves with the white margins. Typically the newer leaves kind of have a little bit of a variation. So some will have a lot, lot more white, some have a little bit less, but I think it's a really interesting plant. And also as you look kind of down into the plant, you can see there's a little bit of a red margin on some of the stems. It gives it a little bit, uh, like it kind of draws your eye down a bit. It's just a beauty. Ooh, this is a beauty. This is a fern. I had one of these. What happened to it? <laughs> this is a heart fern. Zone 10 through 11, 10 inches tall, 12 inches wide. Tuft forming evergreen fern displays glossy green heart shaped fronds with black stems. So you can see that just like right away, the beautiful heart shape of the leaves. They are kind of leathery. They have a texture, definite texture on them. Just really interesting. And you can see a new one coming up right here. That little furry thing, so cute. This is a rubber tree. Variegated rubber tree, Ficus tinique, T-I-N-E-K-E. Now these are really pretty. I have two of these in our house right now. Um, and they're really an easy care plant. They get water once a week on Mondays, just a little bit. And um, they just seem to thrive. They're both in kind of a low-ish light situation. They get maybe medium light would be a better way to describe that the areas they're at but I love kind of that sagey green. It's a little bit lighter and then they get creamy variegation onto the pink side. So like this new growth here is really kind of a deeper pink. And then as they open, you can see how they lighten up a little bit, even lighter uh, than still right there and lighter on the lower leaves. Every leaf looks a little bit different and I think they're just so beautiful and they're just so easy to take care of. Got a Monstera here. This is a mini Monstera mini monstera grows 10 and oh a mini monstera grows 10 feet tall and six feet wide <laughs> there's nothing mini about that i was like kind of getting excited there thinking oh is this one going to stay a little bit smaller <laughs> nope see how clean they all arrive they're really i mean minus the packing material that's a little bit messy but the plant themselves and all the soils are still in the pot and that's that's a huge win in shipping i think be so hard to ship plants. Oh, that's a beauty. So you can see like up against the Swiss cheese plant here. So we have a mini Monstera and the Swiss cheese plant, which is the Monstera adansoni. And the mini Monstera is a Rapidophora tetrasperma. Different. Okay, a couple more big ones. This one has blooms. Oh, what is this? Gloxinia Bolivian Sunset. Oh, that is so pretty. I know nothing about this plant. It's a zone eight through 11, flowers fall through winter. It's a striking evergreen shrub that grows two feet by two feet, uh, displaying scarlet red tubular flowers above glossy dark green foliage. The plant blooms when the days are short. Interesting. Oh. I really like that. I've never had one before. This one, I, it caught my eye like first thing when I opened the box because it has purple blooms. Now this is a Gloxinia too, right? I don't see a tag. I'm gonna have to refer to the list that they sent. Streptocarpus lady slippers white. Is gorgeous. Oh my goodness. I hope these flowers last a really, really long time. I love this. Wouldn't it be beautiful? I don't know if there are other varieties, probably I'm guessing, but have a collection of these all in pots with different color blooms. Mm. 
Okay, now we're on to what looks to be some smaller plants. Oh, that's pretty. So here we have an Aeonium variegata. That is a beauty. I love having uh, succulents that look like this to pop in mixed succulent arrangements because it brings a pop of light. Uh, it's kind of the same with the variegated elephant bush, uh, the Portulacaria variegata. Um, they have very similar coloring and that one grows a little bit taller. So to have something that's a little bit shorter with that same pop of white variegation is gonna be fun. Whoa, look at that. This is a Sedum nesbomerianum. Sedum nesbomerianum. It's a sedum. That's blooming. That's really pretty, sweet white blooms. Now that one fell on top of this one, so I can't attest to what this one's gonna look like. It looks like maybe the bloom stock got squished, but that's okay. We can Grab pop my that clippers off. So don't wreck it further. And this is an Echeveria called Minima. Got a nice shape. Bummer that that was crushed because that's some pretty color right there, but that's okay. All right, guys, it looks like we have six more. This is a string of something, I think. String of pearls. Always use string of pearls. I actually don't think I have any string of pearls. I have string of bananas and I have string of dolphins right now, but no string of pearls. That's a nice healthy looking one. Look how sweet those are. String of turtles, is that right? Yes. I've actually never had one of these before. Okay, I need to calm down. I'm so, so excited to get it into the plant. I don't want to, to wreck any of the leaves here. Okay, calm yourself while opening plants. Look at that plant. Oh, I'm excited about this one. They do look like turtle shells. It says it'll grow 14 inches wide. Small vining plant displaying round succulent green leaves with white veins in a turtle shell pattern. Beautiful in dish gardens and hanging baskets. We've got a furry one in here. Yep. That is an Echeveria called Setosa. And it's got nice, just kind of medium green leaves that have a fuzzy texture on them. There we go. Yeah, it's a nice looking one. No broken leaves or anything. This is a Faccaria tigrina. That's really neat. Kind of has like a aloe slash Haworthia quality to it. Really thick leaves with little teeth on the edge and kind of on the top too. This is a Crassula called Buddha's Temple. Ooh, look at that. Boy, if you're a person that likes, like, what is it? Is it a, like balance? Symmetry or? Symmetry, perfection. <laughs> this would be your plant. Look at that. That is the coolest thing. It looks like it, it's not a plant. <laughs> the leaves are so stacked so perfectly. It looks like an artist's geometric rendition of a lost succulent. It's like, it's like taking, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's like not a real plant. Right, but it is. That's cool. This, this one's gonna crack you up. Senecio stapeliaformis, stapeliaformis, oh my goodness. It looks really cool. Now I've never had one of these, clearly. Uh, upright succulent, leafless cigar stems. Oh, that's, that's a good way to say it. Displaying a snakeskin look. Drought tolerant, great for container planting. So like, I'm guessing, does it shoot up new growth from underneath? That's really cool though. That also looks like these kind of go along the same lines like they belong together in the same arrangement. I like it. I don't, I don't really know what, <laughs> like, like, I don't know that I could put it in a mixed arrangement just all by its lonesome. Like, I feel like I'd need two more at differing heights to make a little grouping, but it's a really interesting looking plant. And I think you guys, that is it in this box. So what I'm gonna do is get them all organized and we can kind of take an overview of the whole lot. 
all rounded up and I think it's a beautiful collection of plants right here. I'm really excited to have these. So what I'll probably do is I'm going to be repotting some of them into some more decorative containers. Some of them will end up in the house. Some will stay out here in the studio. And I do a lot of shuffling of my plants anyway. I may even use some of these in like a mixed arrangement. Uh, we may work on some projects this next month. Uh, January is just such a good house plant time of year. Um, also, we will link little prints down below. Uh, they are offering a discount. So GA20 is the coupon code in case any of you guys are interested in ordering. We don't work with little prints. They did send us these plants, um, but we don't work with them in any capacity, but I thought that was really generous of them. We actually met the owners of this company when we were at the Seattle Flower Show a couple years ago now, um, and they were really nice. So anyway, beautiful bunch of plants, super fun to do an unboxing since it's been so long. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next video.